fellow YouTube, it's Ryan here with Hobbies of Man once again, and today we're gonna to be doing our haul video one more time. So we're gonna be doing uh, novels, comics, uh, manga, in that order. But we're gonna do digital first because I usually put the digital aspect uh, or the digital purchases at the beginning of each section. But I think that this time I'm gonna try doing it where I show you all the digital purchases first. And then I go into the physical stuff, and the physical stuff is going to be divided by those three groups, whereas the digital is all together, right? So let's start with the digital novels here. So this is my Kindle library. At some point, I started buying stuff for this month. I think it was around here-ish. So there you go. First meaningful purchase here is Tales of the Wild. This is a, uh, a sword and sorcery anthology. It follows this... Uh, as far as I understand it, it's a lesbian barbarian called Rexa. Uh, it looks good. It's by Yazar Quint. I don't know if they're a good writer or not, but uh, it looked good and it was only a dollar, so I picked it up. Uh, going on from there. The next important purchase was the Conan story number two, Black Starlight. I have not managed to read it yet, but I will do so as soon as I finish with the Conan book I have right now. Then we have Witch Girl Study Group, that's a harem lit. Top Tier Privateer, and Biopunk Revelations, and then finally Apex Shifter. Uh, this is the Omnibus Edition, and it looks like I bought a lot of Marcus Sloss this month. So that's it for the uh, novels. In terms of manga, I think I bought Fables last month, and Batman and Robin as well. Uh, Future Sci-Fi Tales was this month, and Creature Commandos was this month, and uh, sadly I'm not going get, to get time to read it this month, but hopefully uh, if I don't review it at some point here soon, before the movie, or the, before the show comes out, I'll review it next October. And then in terms of Humble Bundles, I actually ended up buying the Wheel of Time Humble Bundle uh, two months ago, or one month ago, I think, but I don't remember mentioning it. So if I didn't, here you go. Here's all the stuff that's included here. So it's a bunch of Wheel of Time stuff. And then some Red Sonia stuff. And then some random things. Legendary. Precinct. More Legendary. Some Tarzan and Sheena stuff, which is great. More Legendary. Jungle Girl by uh, Frank Cho, which is something I'm very excited about. More uh, Edgar Rice Burroughs stuff. And Athena, which is also kind of cool. And then I got Eerie. And I don't know why they sold Eerie before um, Creepy, because Creepy came out first. But here's Eerie. I am planning on doing a video about it soon, uh, because I've been reading the first uh, volume of this, and it's quite good. So this gives you a few... Uh, Eerie Presents books. Uh, one is called El Cid, and the other one is The Hunter, and then it gives you the Eerie Archives, all 29 of them, I think, as well as some new Eerie books. And uh, they're pretty cool. They're pretty interesting. I like them. Uh, Brian K. Vaughn talks about them. Or, sorry. Um, Michael K. Vaughn talks about them, uh, so you should check out his stuff. He has the physical copies. I only have the digitals. Uh, and I also end up buying Creepy, so here I go. Same thing, it's by Dark Horse. You get 29 creepy volumes, creepy archives, and then some random creepy stuff uh, that was published under the uh, name of the imprint, I guess. And I'm very excited about these as well. I love the covers, but I also find the art inside to be really good uh, and in black and white, so that's nice. So that's it for the digital stuff uh, there. And I think I have some digital manga as well. Let me see if I can find it here. Yeah, I do. Here we go. I got five high school DXC novels because I won a uh, giveaway uh, from Bookwalker. So the Bookwalker sent me a link. I clicked on the link and it gave me all of these uh, books. So that's really nice. I'm very happy about that. And I think that is it for, uh, for the digital stuff this month. So let's move on to books and novels. And let's start with some cool stuff. So I got Conan, 
The Conquering Sword of Conan, which is the third book in the Conan series, and the last book in the series, uh, for $10. It was uh, really cheap for some reason. I don't know, maybe a lot of people were buying it, and so um, it happened to to uh, be cheap. I'm not really sure. That looks familiar. It looks like the, um, like the artwork for the new Conan novels, or sh short stories, actually. So here we go. This is what it has. Uh, Red Nails is probably the most important one. The Man Eaters of Zambola is one I've heard of as well. And Beyond the Black River is also one that I've heard of before. So there you go. These books are really good. Uh, only about half of them is content uh, in terms of like what Robert E. Howard actually wrote that is like in the canon. And the other half is like stuff like drafts and stuff. So overall, really good stuff. I, I think it's a great value. I just need to get the second one to finish the collection there. Then I have some Heart Case Crime. This is something I would, I've been wanting to get it for a while, and I finally managed to get my hands on some. So here's Gore Vidal's Thieves in the Fallout. I have not read this. And uh, this book is quite short, and I don't know really why uh, Hard Case Crime bothers making hardcovers, but given that I only bought it for like $3, I have no problems with it. This is a X library edition, but it doesn't have any blemishes on it because this one was very well taken care of. I was, man I was able to remove the cover and stuff, uh, like the plastic cover. Uh, however, that was not the case for the girl with the deep blue eyes. This one has a lot of damage all over the place. There's a lot of glue and stuff, uh, but overall it's fine. It's not that big of a deal. I also got this for like $3. Uh, moving on to one last hard case crime book. This is Query. This is actually the one that I'm most interested in because this is kind of like a big important uh I, as far as i understand it american version of someone like james bond so this is like uh a meaningful american uh you know uh what's it called like agent type character and i'm very excited about this one this was also a library copy and removing all of the library stuff actually ended up causing it more damage than i would have liked but uh it's not that big of a deal ultimately and i got that one for two dollars i think then we have some Tarzan. This is Jungle Tales of Tarzan. It's a book that I've been chasing for a while and I have not been able to find. So when I did, I had to pick it up regardless of how much it costs. And happily, that was only about $2. Then we have another Louis L'Amour book. You have Fallon uh, with uh, bonus material. I really haven't looked into what that is, though. Then we have The Mucker, another Edgar Rice Burroughs. This one is actually pretty hard to find. I love this cover here. It's a Frasetta cover as far as I understand it. And uh, this one also has a little bit of damage, but... I managed to uh, minimize it as much as I could. Then we have Tarzan number seven, Tarzan the Untamed. This one is definitely faded and stuff, mostly here. And there's also some damage, but nothing too bad. Uh, I'll probably get uh, my hands on a better edition of this, but I bought this so I could get all of the other books without having to pay for shipping. And then finally we have Long Arm, which is an adult Western, which means it's a Western with uh, erotic elements in it, which is interesting. This is a long arm giant, which means it's a long novel. Uh, and I'm curious to see if this is any good um, because I've heard good things about this series, but I don't know if it applies to all of the books or just some of them. So there you go. That's it for the novels. Let me move these this way. And we can get started with the comic books here soon. So uh, let's look at the single issues first. So here we have Conan the Barbarian number four. Justice League versus Godzilla versus Kong. This one was pretty good. Red Sonia number four. I'm slowly starting to consider that maybe uh, I need to step away from the series. Wonder Woman number two. I love this series, but the price point is not my favorite. Although it is, uh, you know, it has more pages than your standard. Uh, so it's worth it, I guess, but I don't know. Here we have Green Arrow number five. I, I really enjoy the Green Arrow series so far. Rogue Sun number 16. Uh, the cover has nothing to do with the book, though. Saint Seiya, number one. I really need to get another copy of this because in the back they have this really amazing painting that I want to turn into a poster. And I didn't want to rip it out of the uh, book, so I'm going to get another one and display it, uh, you know, like display the whole thing uh, in a poster board. So, yeah. Then we have Queen of Swords number three. This is the last book in the series. Uh, it was a little bit disappointing. We have Hexagon Bridge number two. I love this. The artwork is amazing, but there there's a lot of spacing on the top and the bottom. It looks like this was a bigger book, and they downsized it to print it physically, and I don't like that. I think that they really should have printed it in the album size that it was originally in, or I'm assuming it was, because both of the 
creators here are uh, European, so I'm guessing it's a European comic. You have Blue Beater number two, really good stuff. Transformers number one, amazing. I love this book. It was wonderful. Uh, you know, Daniel Warren Johnson's uh, not that good at drawing faces, or at least his faces aren't appealing to me, but his character design was great. We have Sheena, number two, much better than the first one. Conan the Barbarian, number three, with uh, the Wraithback, uh, or uh, Braithwaite, uh, that's his name, Doug Braithwaite, um, cover, which is because the next arc is going to be drawn by him. Then you have Sacrificers, number three. And the Mighty Barbarians number six, which is the end of the story so far. And overall, good stuff there. I really enjoyed this. Then we have Forge number five. And I have not read this. And I'm waiting until we get the last one so I can read all six issues uh, in one go. I'm going to put this somewhere else, though, because if I put it here, it's going to get damaged. So uh, bear with me. This is the Forge number five. Okay, so let's move on to hard covers. We have Nor Burlesque. This is a European size, so it's a little bit bigger than your standard. And this is by Titan. This is a hard case crime book. It's by Marini. Hopefully they print other Marini works. He has a lot of them that I'm interested in. And it has this really nice painted look, but only the red pops out, which is nice. She almost reminds me of Black Widow in these pages. Oh, that's naughty. Can't show that. Oh, well. Hopefully I don't get taken down. But yeah, there you go. This is a really good book. It looks real good. I'm going to read it this coming month. Then we have Invincible Ultimate Collection number two. I got this for 20-ish dollars, I think. I can't remember exactly if it was 25 or 28. But uh, I managed to collect a fourth or a third of the series so far. So there's that one. Here's number three. I love this green color. It's nice. And here's number four, and this one I'm very happy about because I got for $15. Uh, I bought this at the same time as I bought that one, brand new from Target, and I got them for 15 bucks because of a sale they had going on uh, and uh, some coupon that I had for some reason that I don't remember uh, having, so it was real nice. And then finally, in terms of hardcovers, we have one more here, which is the Flintstones. Uh, I've heard really good things about this, and I saw it for cheap, so I had to get it. I'm very happy I did. I love the artwork here. It looks really, really fun. Uh, and it works really nicely. So there you go. That's it for the hardcovers. Here's Saga number eight. It's the only paperback that I have for this month. And this manages to get me uh, up to volume nine of Saga. So that means I'm one or two volumes behind. And it means I can get back to reading it here soon. So. There you go, that's it for that. Uh, let me move this a little bit higher. And then we can get started with the manga. So here we have Secretary Kim, technically not manga, but it's manhwa, and it's just a comic book from Asia. So there you go. Very excited about that one. I've been wanting to get it for a while. Here we have Pokemon uh, Adventures number three. This was used, but it's basically brand new. There was almost nothing wrong with it. So I decided to pick it up and I'm very happy about that. I'm. Uh, almost halfway to collecting these, which is very nice. We have Florida Coin number four. And number five, and that means that I am done collecting Volta Koi, which is awesome. It's very nice to be able to check off something from my list and, uh, you know, not have to worry about that series anymore. And we have Beauty and the Feast number 10. I uh, can't wait for the last volume, uh, and I really enjoyed this one. Uh, however, I don't feel like we're getting close to a resolution between the two characters. Like, they both admit that they like each other to themselves, but they haven't talked about it. Uh, and I really want them to talk about it. I think that it's it's important, right? So hopefully it happens in the next volume. Then we have Witch Hand Atelier number 11. Uh, very happy about this one. I like this a lot. However, uh, Kodansha has been printing these in a different place, I think, because they're much thinner than the earlier volumes, even though they have the same amount of pages. And that's kind of disappointing, but it is what it is. Um, Witch Hat Kitchen came out recently, and I have it on my uh, purchase list from Walmart, so I'll, I'll probably end up getting it next week. We have a Ragnarok number eight, Record of Ragnarok number eight. I'm very happy that I'm finally over uh, uh, the 
Jack the Ripper fight because I'm not a fan of that one, even though everyone seems to like it. And it's nice to get to one that I like. So there we go. And we have Boys of Abyss number three. Very excited to get into this depressing ass series. Or at least that volume of it since I've already read the other ones. This is Blue Lock number nine. They did fix the issue where they didn't have this page in the digital edition. However, this feels different from the other ones because I'm pretty sure I could have sworn that the other ones are matte and this is a gloss finish. And that is annoying. I really hate when stuff like that happens because it's like, clearly there's a difference. So why are you guys so lazy that you guys don't fix the issues, right? And uh, I could be wrong though. I haven't actually checked, but I'm pretty sure that they're all matte. We have My Dress Up Darling number 10. I had an issue with this edition because, or not this one actually, with another copy I had because it was upside down. So like the interior was backwards, but I finally got it to get a replacement. So now I have one that's not backwards and I have to return the other one, but um, it is what it is, right? It's not a big deal. Here we have the Spy Family uh, Eyes Only Guide. Uh, I mostly get this because uh, I really like the uh, color pages. Uh, I might take out this poster. I'm not really sure. I kind of want to, but I also don't want to like damage the book, right? Uh, so I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. Let me move this a little bit so it's a little bit more centered. Here we have Spy Family number 10. I love this cover. We have Coming Can't Communicate number 27. Kaiju number eight, number eight. I love this silver color. Although I really wish that they would have done something different here. And I think they did something wrong with one of the previous editions as well, where it was like black, but they changed the color of something. And I can't remember what it was. So I really wish that they would have changed the color there as well. Here's Hitomi Shai with Strangers number six. Very happy about that one. Here's some naughty stuff. We have 2.5 dimensional seduction. Um, don't really have too much to say about that one. I'm just excited to read it. And then the naughtiest of all, Booty Royale. This was so naughty that the manga was not able to continue uh, drawing the series because his family found out that he was writing this. So there you go. That's the end of the haul. Let me know what you guys have been buying this month. And if you bought anything really cool, let me know down below. So there you go. Thank you guys very much for watching and see you guys later.